Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore life between the keys. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and in this episode, I have an exceptional pianist. Her name is Asia Koreponova. Asia, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. Oh Thank my goodness, you. I'm so excited to have you. Uh, Asia, now, um, a, friend, a mutual friend of ours shared some videos of you performing on YouTube, and you're actually quite an active YouTube creator yourself. And when I heard some of your transcriptions, I, I was blown away. And Thank I'm you. so honored to have you here to share your music and the music of the great masters reinterpreted in a very special way by you. So Asia, let's start off by telling, telling us, um, where are you from? Where's your hometown? Uh, my hometown is a little city called Izhevsk, mm -hmm. which is notable because mere 20 miles away from that city, Mr. Tchaikovsky was born. Ah, we're going to hear a little in, bit of Tchaikovsky. A little bit. Even in a smaller place that's called Votkinsk, but it's like this small and remote area. And of course, it feels very special to be from such a place. Mm. Tell me a little bit, because one of the things that struck me so much was, well, a couple of things. Number one, you're a formidable pianist. We're about to hear. I'm so excited. I can't wait to, to hear your playing. But you're also an incredibly creative one. And you have some very strong ideas about the ways to introduce people to classical music. Now, we, you and I have actually quite a, an, uh, quite a, um, a discussion right before we started shooting about different strategies to help people fall in love with the music that you and I love, this classical music. Um, as you know, the trend is to, you know, for orchestras to play more popular things like Star Wars, Harry Potter. Now, I love John Williams. You know, I've played, you know, his music is actually not simple when you play in the orchestra. It's, he's, he, it's, he's a phenomenal writer. Yeah, I had that experience. So I know. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So there's this push to play, you know, for orchestras to play video game music, popular music, and they do draw a lot of people. They're very, very popular. But you take a very different approach. Share with us a little bit about your conviction for how we should be, how you think we should be introducing great music to young people. I will start with a little backstory. Uh, in 2012, I became a winner of uh, Nina Weidman piano competition in Shreveport. And as a winner, I got uh, several engagements throughout the country. and. Uh, competition's director, Lester Wilson, she, at one of my performances, she said, it was in Jackson, Mississippi, she said, we have this wonderful private school here in Jackson that is very special and the kids are very special. Would you want to play a little bit of your repertoire or something for them? And I, of course, agreed. I was very happy. And I was having a, a suite of Nutcracker in my hands, the plethny of suite of nut, Nutcracker dances. And I thought, oh, that's going to be such a perfect, uh, you know, repertoire for kids. They're going to recognize it. And Very familiar. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And I went there and I played some of that. But at the same time, I had some other pieces. I had uh, Ravel's Gaspar Delany. Ooh. I had uh, Bagbuzoni Chacon. I had a sonata by Beethoven, and I thought, well, if I only play just one thing, it's, 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 it's not going to be very diverse for them. And I was amazed that the kids were excited to recognize the music that all of them, of course, saw at the Christmas shows sure. and everything. Sure. But they were like, oh, yeah, it's a familiar tune, but they, they were really familiar with this. And when I played Andine, Ooh. and when I played from Gaspar de Lanoui, okay. and of course I, to I told them what this piece is about, and there's a poem behind it, and there's the heartbreak going on, and the water demon, and, yeah. the water demon <laughs> and I would never forget their eyes, and they were like 10, 11 years old. They were sitting like this. Absolutely stunned. Mm. And I was playing on this little upright, 
completely beaten up. And it's, it's, an, it's incredibly sophisticated music. It is an incredibly sophisticated music, but also it's very engaging music. It has this very natural feeling about it. It draws you into that. And I think a lot of performers, this is my theory. I, it's not like I'm accusing anybody of anything. My theory is a lot of performers are afraid to give up the children an opportunity to hear the, the real music. I think a lot of people forget that if we read biographies of some great minds, not even not music minds, some others, a lot of them had these early childhood inspiration from classical music. Some of them heard opera, some went to ballet, some heard symphony, some heard something overwhelming. They heard something that was bigger than them, that was bigger than any other experience they had before. It wasn't something like... <laughs> as pretty as it is, it is simple, it's understandable, and there's no mystery behind it. There's nothing to discover. It's it's right in front of you. Mm. But when you hear, which is what popular music tries to do, it tries to be very easy to digest, but, easy to accept. Yeah, but serious music, serious music, serious music has so many layers. There's mm. always a mystery. What's going to happen? What's going to be the next minute? What's going to be after that chord? What what type of texture going to come up? And after that particular experience that I had in that school. I thought this is something very special. I want to see children with eyes like that more. Mm -hmm. So I started asking organizers of my concerts that I anyway play with orchestras, I play at concert series, I play in different places. I asked them, would you mind contacting local schools for me? Public schools, private schools, doesn't matter. And let me play for kids. And they do. And I go in and I play real deal rap for them. And of course, I tell them what I play. I tell them little historical snippets, not much, but just a little bit to give them orientation. I try to do themes, for example. Uh, recently in Texas in March, I played a little bit of variations by Bach, a little bit of variations of by Beethoven, a little bit of variations by Brahms, as that was my program for my piano festival uh, last month. And they loved how different those variations are and how different composers, approach, that was high school, how differently composers approach that genre. And last year, I started a nonprofit organization mm. that's called Music for Minds. Music for, for Minds. Minds. Okay. Where, which I hope will help me to do this type of activity more, and also I'm hoping to draw my colleagues to do, to join me and to do the same thing more. I know a lot of people do different programs for kids, but I think more of them should involve serious pieces. Mm, so not watering down the music, yes, but challenging the young listeners to explore and, and experience yes. music, great music, complex music. My biggest happiness is each time I play these programs, there are some kids in the audience that approach me afterwards and say, oh, you know, I played an instrument and my parents made me play an instrument and I was bored, I didn't know what to do, but I heard you play now and I want to come back. Mm. And it's very, very humbling and it gives me, you know, this reassurance that I'm doing something in the right direction because that's exactly what I want to hear. Now, we're going to hear you play two works, but they are your transcriptions. First, um, let's, for folks who don't know what a transcription is, can you just give us a brief explanation of that? Transcription is, can be, the shortest way to say it is an adaptation of a musical material that wasn't written for this particular instrument. And this can be taken two different directions. One direction is when you literally play exactly the notes that composer wrote for the orchestra or for like chamber ensemble or something like that. Or 
you take those notes and you put your own embellishments over it a little bit to make it more I exciting. I, I suspect that's what you're doing, right? <laughs> you know, actually, I do both. Oh, the pieces, okay. the pieces that I'm playing for you today, that oh. are, that are uh, Amy Beach's uh, uh, song "Extase" and Tchaikovsky's episode uh, "Rose Adagio" from Sleeping Beauty Ballet. These I put some passage work on. But my another transcription, which is big and it's almost 40 minutes long and it wouldn't <laughs> fit the format of the show, which is Rachmaninoff's Cello Sonata, wow. which is written originally for cello and piano. piano. And I didn't change anything in that. I just okay. merged the cello and piano. I had to sometimes change the register sure. for the cello line. Sure. But it's exactly everything what Interesting. Rachmaninoff wrote. I didn't, I didn't embellish it in any way. But we're going to be hearing the Amy Beach and the Tchaikovsky with your embellishments. Yes. I'm so excited. Can't wait to hear you play. Oh, and before you start playing, one of the interesting things that we do here on the show is we invite our guests to choose from a range of pianos. And I'll say you've chosen to perform your transcriptions on this beautiful hand-built Yamaha CF6. Why did you choose this piano? This piano is not a concert grand piano, but it sounds like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has this volume, it has depth of the bass, it has richness of its tone, and this very special liveliness. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it allows you to do very subtle things on the soft side of the sound, which I appreciate very much as well. Right. I can't wait to hear your performance.
Blasio, I, I don't know what to say. I, it was absolutely stunning. You know, thank it's one you. thing to, to hear you on video. It's another thing. Well, I guess we are hearing you on video, but you know, I get to hear you <laughs> right here. I'm blown away. What magnificent writing. Thank and you've you. taken beautiful material and just, I mean, it sounds like a whole new world. Now, the, the Amy Beach was originally for, for voice and piano, and piano right? Yes. And of course, the Swan Lake is for, you know, full orchestra with dancers. How in the world did you do it? It's amazing. I just, your imagination, your coloring and your technique, absolutely Thank you so dazzling. Much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. So I understand that uh, in addition to playing concerts all over the world, you actually have your own YouTube series. Tell us a little bit yes. about that. It's a, and a very innovative YouTube series. Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I was trying uh, to make uh, my series innovative. It's called Midnight Pieces. Midnight Pieces. It's okay. mainly consisting of music that is suitable for the nighttime listening. It's a lot of a romantic, beautiful, uh, and very, sometimes very subtle pieces. My idea behind it was to first introduce people to some really rarely played works, to some wider range of Russian composers, other than Tchaikovsky, Rachman, and Prokofiev, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, we all know, you know, Balakirov, we know Glinka, we know some other authors, but there are some uh, peak pieces among, you know, their output. And for example, my recent uh, episode of Balakirov is his Nocturne that is much more rarely played mm. than Islame, for example. Mm. And so generally this uh, series consists of pieces arranged in the groups of four, each of them having one rare piece, one piece by a Russian composer, one super famous piece, and one transcription of mine. And the, the series started in the beginning of September and will go for the whole year until September of the next year. And so there will be 52 pieces. Oh my, so every week? Every week. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow, fantastic. We'll be sure to have links to your YouTube series in the show notes Thank below. you so much. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. Now, not only that, <laughs> you're just this entrepreneurial, creative, artistic musician. Amazing. You also have, I understand, your own festival. Yes. Tell us a little bit I about I was that. very happy to start a festival Baltimore last year in a beautiful hall of University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They were building this hall for almost 10 years mm. and it was opened uh, two seasons ago. And I got to perform a recital there and was so inspired by the acoustics and by beauty of this hall. And, and so I asked permission of the music department there to try to organize a festival and they were so kind to let me do that. Mm. My festival has a very specific programming. It features complete sets of works of composers in each concert. Would that be a set of a certain genre, like complete Beethoven cello sonatas, or set Com of- Wait, 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 complete? Like all of them in like one five. concert? Yes. Whoa. That was a closing night of our festival of 2017. Okay. <laughs> uh, or it's a complete set of works for certain instrumentation. Like okay. this year, we have a concert that features all chamber works by Richard Strauss oh, with okay. piano. Okay, so you, you <laughs> never go in small pieces. If I get the theme of who Asia is, you, you just... <laughs> You really give folks the full experience. I mean, we had actually we were talking about this a little bit before the shoot. I love how you express this in terms of exposing the life of a composer. Yeah, when you when you get to hear, for example, the five Beethoven sonatas that he wrote for cello and piano, he's been writing them throughout his life, mm. and so within one night you get to hear a lifetime of his experience within this particular genre. See, that's, that's amazing. And I think, yes, that program would be longer, but, you know, we all love, love to live longer. <laughs> <laughs> so so this being saturated with that is beautiful. A lifetime in one night. Yes. 
Asya, I, I want to applaud you for mm. your creativity, your imagination, your intelligence, and the way that you want to give folks the, the full experience. More than that, yeah. we also have an academy program for ah, students. Okay. And each year we involve the students that we recruit in performance of one of such cycles. Last year it was complete Brahms piano quartets. <laughs> And this year, the pianists and the string players are separated, so the pianists will be playing complete Rachmaninoff piano duos. Wow. And uh, the string players will be playing complete Tchaikovsky string quartets. Wow. And we're still recruiting, so if you know of, <laughs> of some students that would love to be part of such sure. thing, I would love to share the information. Once again, you. what is the name of the festival? Festival Baltimore. Festival Baltimore. And it runs June 3rd to 17th ah, okay. in so Baltimore. Very soon. Okay, so we'll be sure to have a link to that as well. Thank you. Asya, we're going to have to have you back on the show. I would love like to. Great, great, great. <laughs> I would love to. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you do. Uh, for, for the Cunningham Piano Show, I'm Hughes. I'm at kind a of loss of words because I'm just, wow, <laughs> just in awe of Asya. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. For the Cunningham Piano Show, I'm Hugh Sung. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.